Hi guys, it's Lena. Welcome back to the Not About University YouTube channel. Today I will be discussing something a little bit more academic than all the previous topics I've discussed in my other videos, which is lectures and seminars. As an arts and culture student in Radboud University, sometimes finding where your classes are and trying to figure out your lectures and seminars can be an adventure on its own. And it's because of all these things that you need to think about, which are time. The first thing you'll have to think about is time. Sometimes it's at 10 in the morning, sometimes 1 in the afternoon. There's a personal agenda on the website or the Radboud student app, and those will be your best friends throughout your time at the university because you will be referring to it multiple times throughout the day just to make sure that you are on time. The next thing you'll have to think about is where the lecture or seminar is held. This tends to change too, and although it can get confusing, it allows you to really explore the campus. Although, you have to watch out for those abbreviations. If you've never been to the university, it can get a little confusing, so here's a little guide. To break it down a little bit, let me explain what lectures and seminars are. So, lectures is those things you see in movies, you know, where all the students are sort of sitting in an individual row of seats and there's one professor in the front of the class and that professor would be explaining a topic and they're all with their laptops or notebooks open and they're taking notes. Yeah, that's a lecture. And those things are usually held in a bigger room because it's literally just the professor explaining things most of the time and you're just going to be sitting there taking notes and of course asking your questions. So. Lectures are usually held in places like these. On the other hand, seminars are much smaller, so it consists of much less students than lectures, and this is because they want to make it a little bit more intimate, and seminars will consist of more open discussions rather than just one professor or two professors standing in front of the class and telling you um, what you need to know. You will be discussing the literature that you've had to read, or sometimes you'll even have presentations and you'll be able to work with all of your fellow students. Seminars are usually held in places like these. tip though, seminars are usually divided into groups, so you may not be seeing the people you're used to seeing in lectures, therefore you need to be relying on your own personal agenda or um, syllabus to make sure that you know which group you're in and you know which room you need to be in, just so you don't get that confused. This information is usually available on your course syllabus, as I said, or it is located on Blackboard. Now that you know where and when you need to be, the next thing that you need to know is how you're going to get there. So as I said before, a lot of Dutch students and a lot of international students go with their bikes. That's just the most common mode of transportation here in the Netherlands. But if you don't like the bike, I don't like the bike, it's just because I don't want to do extra exercise, I take the bus. And this information on like when the bus schedules are is available on the 9292 app. And I'm going to show you right here what it looks like, how to figure out where to go. Um, but you can also take the train, you can take your feet, you can just walk, you can take your skateboard, you can longboard, I know a few of my fellow students that do that as well. It really depends, but just so you know, which mode of transportation you take will determine how long it will take for you to get to the university or whichever building on campus you need to be at, so just make sure that you plan a little bit ahead. 
Lastly, and probably the most important part of preparing for your lectures and seminars is to make sure that you've done all the reading and all the assignments beforehand. So unfortunately, you don't just get to show up and sort of chill there and sit there and just listen to what people tell you you need to know. You need to be an active participant in, you know, the accumulation of your own knowledge, I guess. So. There is the course syllabus, and this is usually available on Blackboard, at least it is for me, and it will basically guide you throughout all of your lectures and seminars, and it will tell you, usually week by week, what you need to read, which pages, which handbook um, for lectures for arts and culture students. Um, what I found is that you usually need to read chapters from your handbook that you've probably already bought in the beginning of the year. Um, if not, then you can probably ask to copy or to take some pictures. There's also online PDF versions usually. Um, for seminars, on the other hand, it's a little bit more complicated than that. Not only do you have additional literature that you need to read, which will also be available on Blackboard, um, you will also need to be doing assignments. And these could be individual assignments, and usually that's sort of more in the form of notes because seminars will have more open discussions. So maybe sometimes the professor will ask upon you, or will sort of just ask a question to the entire class, and you'll be able to answer with your notes. Um, and sometimes this will also have, uh, this will also consist of group presentations, and you may have to do your own research, or you may have to meet up with um, your fellow students who are in your group and you will have to prepare a presentation and practice and all that sort of thing that you're probably already familiar with in high school or your previous education. So that is pretty much it really. Um, lectures and seminars are the main parts of your education in university and they can get a little bit heavy. Um, workload is never easy to sort of tread through, but as long as you're planning well and you are aware of all the small details, then it's going to make your experience with all of these things so much easier. Um, it's really not fun when you're already running, running late and you've got work that you haven't finished yet and you haven't, you know, finished the reading and you're unprepared and you're sort of all over the place and you get the building wrong and then you have to run to the other side of the campus and it's really not something that you want to be doing, especially when you're already stressed out or when you already have other essays and other workload for other courses that you need to think about. So I hope that my tips will help you out um, if you are a prospective student or if you already are a student at Red Bar University or any other university for that matter. I hope that this sort of kind of explains to you or gives you a little bit of an overview of what they're really of because I remember being in high school I was always so worried about what it would look like once I'm in university because you know sort of the bigger picture of what you're learning but you don't know what it's like on a daily basis so hopefully this gave you a little bit of an insight towards that all right that's it from me thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one bye